What's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, a.k.a. Barnacles, with another unboxing video for you guys. If you've been following me on Facebook and Twitter, you know I've been getting a lot of stuff in the mail. Um, today, I've got the TP-Link Load Balance Broadband Router. Now, what this little device allows you to do, allegedly, and we'll find out, is take multiple broadband connections. So if you have like DSL, a cable modem, one or more of those connections, wireless, um, you can plug them all into this router and this router will figure out how to separate the traffic and load balance it across all the connections so your house basically just sees it as one, one IP address to the internet and it figures out how to do everything on the back end. So if you look on the back here, it shows typical network setups. You have two ISPs, one's connected to a cable modem, another one's connected to like DSL, goes through the switch and then out to your computers. Now this thing has five ports on it and three of the ports are configurable so you can have up to four broadband connections attached to this. So you could have like two cable modems, two DSLs. You could have a cable modem, two DSLs, and 4G tethered to your cell phone. Um, pretty much there's a lot of combinations, but the thing got amazing reviews on Newegg. It's only like 50 bucks, um, and it's the, it's one of the few things I've seen on Newegg that actually has five stars. So let's go ahead and bust this thing open. So you guys can see, I now have a knife. Oh, right, it's uh, that I'm using now, so I'm not just like stabbing shit with pencils and pens trying to open it. See, I listen to you guys every once in a while. Not always, but every once in a while. Also, let me know if the quality of this video seems better. I'm uh, using a new lighting setup. I haven't done the unboxing video on it yet, but uh, it, I actually really like it. It's all LED based. So now my room's not 10,000 degrees and I'm not like sweating bullets sitting here trying to make a video for you guys. All right, so we opened it up, took the cellophane off, pulled out. Looks like we have a standard cardboard tray. <laughs> Wing! And we have software, I'm dropping shit here. Got my software, I'm sure we'll need that for something. Uh, see, I got a purchasing guide in case uh, I'm like, oh shit, I need to buy more. No, I would have just picked it up on Newegg. TP-Link quick installation guide. Now this sucker might come in handy. Let's see here, how to configure the router. This is like how to log into it with the software, how you wanna configure it. Looks like you can do all kinds of shit. All right, that's cool. We'll set that aside. We have the Guia de Mascara Rapida. And I'm sure I said that wrong, but instructions in another language, I'm guessing Spanish. Uh, we have a power cable. All right. And this guy's got, it's a three pronger. So, well, I was set aside, I don't need to open that up. And then here is the brick. Come on out of there. Kind of looks like a Netgear switch. Um, it's actually really heavy. It's all metal. Uh, so can't complain about the build quality. It's got an internal power supply, so you don't have a brick. You just have a regular cable. I really, really dig that. Uh, it comes with a little networking patch cable that they pretty much assume you're going to be sitting right next to the connection because it's only about three feet long. And we've got some stick -em feet to put on this thing. So, and that's about it. We got the cardboard. So very, very simple packaging. So it looks like we just got to hook it up, plug it in. It's got on the bottom, it's got a MAC address and a serial number. I'm sure the MAC address is used to send to the ISP. And on the back, the ports are labeled LAN. You have three labeled as WAN or LAN and one labeled as WAN explicitly. And on the front here, you have a power LED, a system LED, a WAN LED, three that can be WAN or LED. LAN LEDs and LAN. And if it's orange, it's one. If it's green, it's LAN. So very, very cool stuff. All right, well, let's go get this thing hooked up and see if it does what it says. All right, guys, it's a little bit too much of a pain in the ass to hold the camera and do everything. So I just did it. You can see I just got like a power strip dangle in there uh, for my exhaust fan <laughs> to cool the, cool the little wiring closet here. And there's my home server for those of you guys don't know that's 14 terabytes. But anyways, here's the new switch right here, the TP-Link. And I've got it connected with a WAN on port one and two, so this modem and that modem. And then I've got them going to the WAN port on my Netgear, which I'm then gonna go upstairs and configure. And what should happen is these two guys will get IP addresses from this, and then this will create a network address translation layer, a firewall, that will then lease an IP address to this, so this will only get one IP address. And then whenever the house tries to connect to the internet, this is gonna make the decision of which modem to use to establish that connection to load balance the two and utilize the full network. So let's see if it lives up to its five-star reputation and go try this out. 
All right, guys. Well, I've got the I've got the router connected right now, and I have one modem on, so I can kind of give you guys an idea of what I normally get with my bandwidth. So we're gonna go ahead and do the Bothell Washington test. We'll use the same server for both tests. Get a ping of about twenty eight. That's because I've got some other things going on in the background. You can see here that I got you know between thirteen fifteen ideal is about the best I can hope for as far as bandwidth is concerned with the single modem. And then you'll see right here on my upstream, I'm lucky to get two. I get a little bit of a boost in the beginning there, but then it falls off down to about 1.7. And then it climbs to, you know, two if I'm lucky and then just hangs out there. So you can see I don't have a lot of bandwidth and that's why my live stream sucks so horribly. So now uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to connect up both modems and uh, to the balancing router and we're going to conduct another speed test. All right, guys, here's the configuration for the TP-Link uh, load balancing router. And you can see right here, it's a pretty simple interface. You go through quick setup. I'm not going to do that in this video because I already went through it to configure everything. And it's very easy. It just asks you a series of questions. Yes, I have a dynamic IP address. Yes, this is what I expect to happen. And then when you're done and you exit out, you can see that you have two connections. You've got your one connection here and you got your one connection here. So I have two links right now. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and censor that IP address information. Not that it's, it's critical. It's just I don't want to bring down DDoS attacks on myself. You guys understand. Um, and what you do now is you can go into network and you can go configure the bandwidth for WAN1. You can configure the bandwidth for WAN2. Uh, right here, the upstream and the downstream. And that's used for like QoS type stuff if you want to even you know further tune the balancing of your multiple connections. And you can even configure the MAC addresses for each of the modems. This way you're not just using the default MAC address because some ISPs, if you feed them a MAC address from a router, they'll intentionally slow you down. So instead I'm feeding it MAC addresses from my actual network cards of my computers. And uh, if you go through here in advanced, you can actually set up network address translation. You can set up virtual server forwarding, port triggering. Um, you can even do full traffic control. You can say when bandwidth gets to 90% of its threshold, start limiting connections and stuff like that to keep the bandwidth open so things don't lag and ping stay up. Um, there's all kinds of stuff to mess with. Now, there's this load balance tab. This is the most important tab of the entire thing right here. And when you first install the router, this is checked right here, enable ap application optimized routing. Well, the problem with this is, is any application that creates a set of sockets, it routes it through a single connection. So you only get the maximum speed of that connection. So when I first connected the modem, I was like, okay, well, this isn't working very well. Uh, so I did a little research and I unchecked that. And by unchecking this, and there's help too. I mean, you can come in here and it ta tells you about like, oh, you know, by by enabling this, you you have all the packets go over one connection, which will, you know, prevent anomalies and abnormalities from happening. Um, but I unchecked it because I want the bandwidth combined and both cable modems are on the same network. So I expect them to be, you know, the same level of reliability. So now that I've got that checked, let's go ahead and go look at the status. We can confirm both modems are up and online. So now we're going to go over and conduct a speed test. Same server as before, Bothell. And now you can see I'm pulling 30, 30 megabit down. And now my upstream, you can see it spike and it'll come back down. It keeps climbing, keeps climbing. Come on. So there we go. 3.7. 3.8, 3.94, a little over four megabit up. So, so, you know, it actually doubled my bandwidth. They combined the connections beautifully. Now, it depends on what protocol you're using and what software you're using, whether or not it can utilize both connections in parallel. Um, obviously, if all the data is being transmitted over one connection or one socket, it's going to use one modem. But if you have something that's using multiple sockets, one for up, one for down, uh, or multiple down, multiple up, it'll this, this router balances them beautifully, and I haven't noticed any overhead on it. Uh, the pings are a little high right now just because of other stuff that's going on on my network. But normally I get between a 10 and a 12 ping to most of my local servers. And when I put the router in place, the ping was was within one millisecond. So the router literally adds no noticeable overhead, um, which I thought was absolutely wonderful. But, you know, I'm elated that it worked. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get additional broadband connections brought into my house in the form of DSL or possibly wireless 4G, um, since I have two more ports on the router that I can put broadband connections on. And yes, you can combine different connections of different speeds. You can even add a, a cellular uh, network. And there's even options in this thing to do uh, failover and stuff like that. Like you could say, only if the cable modem fails, switch over to the other connection and use it as a backup. 
That way, if you have like a 4G connection that costs you money or has limited bandwidth, you can have it basically automatically fail over to that one, but only when all your other internet's dead to save you money. And that might be something that I do too, is I might add one more DSL line to this and I might actually put a, a 4G um, card up there and connect it to it because I think it would be cool to have, you know, uninterrupted internet, you know, even if things go down and infrastructure fails. So guys, I hope this video gave you a nerdgasm. This is definitely a unique piece of technology that I didn't know existed. Um, I actually started out using DDWRT on my Netgear uh, wireless switch and uh, I tried to go through all the Linux commands and everything to configure, uh, you know, load balancing network address translation and stuff across two internet connections. And uh, I failed miserably at it. It just didn't work. There was all kinds of errors. Even when I got it to work a little bit, there were still problems to work out. And the configuration was beyond complex. The learning curve was like, you know, unobtainium. And uh, so this piece of hardware cost me 50 bucks off Newegg. It had five star reviews. I plugged it in. I plugged the modems into it. I was up and running within 10 minutes. And it does a beautiful job, as you guys can clearly see here from the speed test results. And now my wife can watch Netflix downstairs while I'm downloading and live streaming and playing games and doing all kinds of stuff. So hopefully my videos moving forward will be uploaded a lot faster and uh, my live streams will look a lot better. So guys, I hope this video gave you a nerdgasm. Please leave your comments down below. I love reading them all. I love responding to you guys. Please come over to my Facebook and Twitter if you have a chance. I love socializing on all those networks. And, uh, you know, if you guys want anything or you want future videos, let me know because uh, I've got a huge list. But, you know, if you give me a good idea, I'll put it on there. So, guys, until next time. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.